Hey guys, this is Mihrut. Today I'm coming to you from my secondary tutorial world. I use this one in case I need something that looks a little bit more realistic. I'm underwater here and that should uh, show you exactly what I'm going to do in the video. But before I get started on the video and the tutorial, uh, I wanted to you know, say that thank you so much for all the subscribers and all the encouragement. We're up to 59 subscribers right now. Uh, when we get to number 60, I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of it. Uh, whoever it is, I'm going to give you a shout out in the next video. Uh, that's dependent on that you have your subscription visible to everybody. If you don't, just you know, throw a comment in the comment section and I'll try to sort out who is actually number 60. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for all the encouragement and all the support. I really do appreciate it. Every like and subscription does help this channel grow and get to where I want it to be. So now on to the tutorial. Uh, anybody who knows me knows that I love hidden entrances and secret bases. And I recently saw a video, it was done a little while ago, and it was by a YouTuber named Grian, huge in the Java world. And I really loved his video, but you can't do any of it in Bedrock. So uh, I took the concept of, of it, and I found a way to make it work in Bedrock, and I think you guys are going to love it. So hidden entrance, right? All right here. You might be thinking right there, and you'd be right. We're going to shoot an arrow at this crease right here. As long as we hit it, which I did not, a little bit lower. There we go. Here goes a little one high block. Now, if you know the video that I'm referencing, you know what I'm about to say. I'm going to say stop swimming. There we go. Or stop flying. We're going to swim right into that hole. Boom. And we have a one high secret base underwater. I think it's amazing. Now, if you watch the other video, you know that, uh, oh, hey, there's a dolphin. <laughs> if you watch the other video, you'll know that he used it above ground and had a pufferfish entrance. That does not work. There you go. In bedrock at all. Now, eventually that uh, arrow will disappear after about 30 seconds or so, and the door will shut. So you don't have to worry about opening it back up or closing it from the inside. And of course, this pressure plate will close it from in here, or open it back up from in here. But yeah, the pufferfish entrance does not work, so what also doesn't work is the being sh shut down for a trapdoor. He had a trapdoor where you'd flip against a wall, and he'd flick it closed, and it would, it would make him small, and he could, you know, run right through there. That does not work either. So, the only way I could get that swimming animation was, obviously, water. So, you put Right there, that crease, I'm going to show you exactly what it does. I built two of these. I didn't hear anything happen. I was a little too... There we go. Boom. Now what that actually does is it triggers this pressure plate right there. The same way as if you threw an item on it, okay, and it lasts, but the item would take five minutes to despawn, right? Arrows take significantly less. So we're going to go ahead and take... There we go. Now I built a second one back here, it's a little bit easier to see, but I'll give you an item list real fast. It's really small. You're gonna need redstone blocks, three of them. You're gonna need sticky pistons, one, two, three, four of them. You're gonna need two pressure plates, item of your choice, and a button. <laughs> Here's a more exposed version of that back there. So when you're swimming around and you find out where you're gonna go, and you're like, I'm gonna go right here. Well, you're gonna swim inside, and you're immediately going to place a sticky piston two blocks down from the entrance, okay? Now, once you place that sticky piston two blocks down from the entrance, you're going to go ahead and put a redstone block right in front of it, and that's going to activate that sticky piston. At that point, you can put a block on it, or you can just wait to put the block on it. Either way. Now, you're going to want to dig down and get your sticky piston facing into the redstone block from above and from the side. From the one from above, you're going to have your pressure plate and that's going to be how you exit this whole thing. Now, caddy cornered to this sticky piston, you're going to have another redstone block with a sticky piston, an air gap, another redstone block with another sticky piston, and your block of your choice that you're going to go ahead and put the pressure plate on. Remember where that pressure plate is, because right in front of that block, I'll show you better. See? Just like
like that. That's where your gap's gonna be. And then you can camouflage that with whatever you need to do. You can knock out other little holes like over here, you know, and put a block in there to cover it up. Yeah, I think that's what I did down below. Okay, and then it works beautifully. You have to do that underwater because you cannot use any kind of dust. It can make a lot simpler of a contraption if we could use dust. There we go. And see, all that does is it pushes this redstone down, which pushes this redstone down, which pushes this redstone over and makes that piston retract again. Come up over here and then take those back. The whole system shuts off. And the pressure plate, all the pressure plate does is it activates this piston which pushes the redstone block out of the way again and depowers that piston. Now the reason why I said you needed a button is simply for the water, okay? Um, the water is going to come in and where everything is, this is what your corridor is going to kind of look like. And I put the button right there to keep the water from going any farther past that point. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and look at this base. Now you don't have to do this secret entrance at all either. You could just do, you come over here, you find anywhere you wanted. I'm not going to do the sand because that would be a mistake. Like I was practicing right here. Okay. But I'll go ahead and do it over here into flying mode there we go you knock out this block right here okay and you can build your base off that okay see that little water you see a little bit of water animation you fix that easily by adding another bucket of water to it so if we go in here add the water to it that little animation goes away then you just stop flying there we go you just swim right in there and you can start making your base. Take some buttons. The most irritating thing you're going to have to deal with is uh, Flipper over here trying to follow you in. <laughs> I haven't had drowns try to get in. I did have this on normal difficulty earlier, and I, I did not have any drowns coming in there. There were a few hanging around. So we're going to go over here, we're going to enter the base, and I'm going to show you around. Show you little tips and tricks. And some of the things that did not work in Bedrock, but did work in Java. So here we go, we're coming in. As you can see, I went ahead and you know, redid all the blocks on the inside so I didn't look like I was in a cave. Uh, I have to agree with Rian on that. That did look a little foreboding. Um, storage system, you can use either shulkers coming out sideways, excuse me, or you can use barrels. Uh, chests are a little bit trickier, it kind of ruins the illusion, but you can just put another block right here, I guess, and then open up your chest if you really, really wanted to. Uh, I like the way barrels look, so. The end chest, I didn't replace the block underneath it. Uh, I did knock out a block above that, and I put a half slab there, that way I could actually open the end chest. Uh, lighting, the way he had his lighting, he knocked out this block right here, and put end rods going all the way across, and he was like, look, you don't even stand up. Well, in Bedrock you do. So we can't do that. So all of our lighting has to be, well, Bedrock lighting. So you're either going to take, and I'm not sure if I did that anywhere around here. I know I did on the next level. But you could put a light source right here, glowstone or sea lantern, and cover it with the carpet. You could do a light source underneath the half slab. I know they did that over here. Let me grab this half slab. See, there's light sources, light sources. I'm making very careful not to walk on that. So, yeah, I do have an enchantment table here. Just the only key to the enchantment table is if you put it on that square right there, that's where your bookcases have to go. So, two high and three long there, there, and there. And all the bottom ones right, you know, on this level right here. Put your lighting sources down, half slab it up. I can prove to you real quick that that does in fact work and it does see the bookshelves through the half slab. That was already enchanted. Mirha, what are you doing? All right, there you go. Level 30 enchantment right there. Too easy. More decorations, more decorations. Okay, you can put another shulker box right there, but you'd have to move that painting out of the way. Now, downstairs works pretty much the same way as it does on Java, thankfully. Uh, you use snow. So I'll take the snow and I'll show you what I mean. 
Snow goes up in increments. So on this first, quote, step down, I'm going to put seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the next one you go down by a couple, and the next one you go down by a couple. And I did happen upon a weird little glitch when you're on snow like this while you're swimming. It's an x-ray glitch. Now if you see these particles on my screen right now, it's because I'm actually supposedly swimming, so my arms are moving, so that's, you know, creating the particles. And then don't forget to put a half slab right here. Uh, I believe it's two of them. Yes, two of them. That way you don't accidentally stand up in the middle of your staircase because then you can't get back down because the trapdoor trick that they use on Java does not work. It has to be water. Underneath here I did put some light sources underneath the carpet. I put a nice little farm and in order to make sure I didn't fall down here I went ahead and just used waterlogged stairs for the water. Pretty easy. Uh, there are light sources up here. There are also light sources underneath the stairs. And I added in some decorations. Lanterns are awesome, just don't use them anywhere near your snow. Or else it will melt it and then you'll be trapped. I have a bedroom here with trapdoor doors. Now it has to have a block above it because if you go to sleep and you pop back up after sleep you'll be, you'll be suffocated. So we had to have room but then we had to have a way to get you back here and you can't use the trapdoor trick. So. I just put another water source around here, half slab right there, and then seven pieces of snow. Then you just have to get into your swimming animation, which sometimes can be a little tricky. I bet you I should have put Death Strider 2 on, on some boots. That probably would have helped. All right, so swimming. There you go. Now, sometimes when you're coming up that last, you know, quote, step, you have to wiggle your face left to right while you're pushing forward, and that'll work. Same thing over here for the another portal. I think I only used six pieces of snow, but you use six or seven, but either way. And a half slab right there, and a half slab right there to make sure you don't pop up. And then water. So when you come through the nether, in and out of the nether, you come back out. All you do is just get back into your swimming animation, wiggle, and then there you are. You're right back up. And that's about it. That's my, my one block high house. You can make as many rooms as you want. And I dare anybody to find this, except for completely on accident. I love this thing. Let me show you guys something. Oh, there's a mirror hut. There's a mirror hut head. <laughs> See, I'm kind of swimming. That's where those particles are coming from. See? And they just kind of like flutter there, no matter where I'm at. And they're white, of course, because, you know, I use quartz. So I really hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please hit like. And also, subscribe. Number 60 gets a shout out on the next video, as long as I know who you are. Um, and yeah, thanks for stopping by. See you next time.